Thank you so much for watching and before we forget, guys, if you like the channel, make sure that you click on the subscribe button. That way you can get all the updates, all the free videos and all the free resources that I give out to my subscribers. And you could end up in WeCat in Victoria uh, or you'll end up waiting for your planning permit for eternity. So it could be it could be delays and all these things happen when you try and squeeze in more than what the rest codes would actually allow. Physical characteristics are all about zonings and overlay overlays. Um, is your proposed site correctly zoned? Um, usually for residential developments, you ideally want your site to have residential zoning. Um, examining restrictive overlays is extremely important. Uh, some overlays are pro-development and can mean smooth sailing uh, for your planning permit application. Size, um, is the size enough to accommodate four townhouses or apartments or how many? Uh, frontage, is the frontage wide enough for your development? You may have a fairly large site with a narrow frontage, uh, making it unsuitable for your proposed development. Site contours is basically a slopes uh, in the site. Um, if the site's got two, uh, if it's a very sloping site, uh, that could mean more construction costs in terms of retaining walls, in terms of site cut and fill, uh, in order to level the site, which would blow the budget out of the water. <laughs> um, Flooding or bushfire zones, um, is the site affected by flooding or does it fall under a bushfire zone? If you're in Queensland, there's a thing called overland flow um, and you've got to make sure that your site doesn't fall under any of these zones um, and that because that will have an effect on your yield and it may stall or hinder the development uh, of your site. Local authority, um, is the local council supportive of the proposed development? Have a preliminary meeting with your council's town planning department to gauge their attitude towards the proposed development. Time to walk away. Well, there's a thing called VPO, which is the vegetation protection overlay. Um, if your site has lots of trees and falls under the VPO vegetation protection overlay, and you cannot put your desired dwellings um, uh, without knocking the trees down, walk away because council may not permit you to get rid of the tree uh, which basically means you might not be able to build to what you are planning to build because um, there might be tree protection zones uh, where the council might not allow you to have a habitable space overlapping that so there are all sorts of uh, issues with that site history research into the previous use of the site for example ask uh, yourself depending upon various use of the site could the site have asbestos buried under the soil or uh, depending upon previous use could the soil be contaminated in any way for example um, petrol uh, an old ex petrol station site um, is a classic example of that if the answer is yes you either walk away or investigate further and find out how you can decontaminate the soil and do your numbers based on um, um, based on and inf based on what it's going to cost you to actually decontaminate the site. Now, land value. This is very very important. Uh, land value is a crucial component when conducting a financial feasibility. Usually, everything remains constant, including professional fees, construction value, permit fees, selling costs, and so on. The only variable in a feasibility study are land and the end sale value. Just because you paid more for the land does not mean that you can get more for your developed product. So let me give you an example in this scenario. Let's say you are considering buying a land to develop four three bedroom townhouses. You have determined that they sell for 530,000 in, uh, in your area. However, the vendor is asking for 600,000 for his land, um, which pushes the price of land to 150,000 for each townhouse. Now, if you do your numbers right, you will notice that in order to allow for all costs and for you to make a profit on this deal, you really need to sell these townhouses as 575,000. However, the market does not allow that as the current value sits at around 530,000 for your townhouses. In essence, you should be paying only 120,000 per townhouse for land to make your margins which justify the end sale value of 530,000. 
if that's what's the case is and you are being pushed into paying more for the land you got to walk away because um, there's no way you'll be able to make any profit on this deal uh, one of the last things in due diligence is uh, legals um, this is where you hire a professional lawyer convincer to help you out uh, they, they particularly look into section 32 or disclosure statement um, and they, they find out the security deeds or caveats on land, they conduct property searches, boundary line or party wall arrangements um, and other restrictive covenants on the site. Usually even before you go to a lawyer an agent will flick you a copy of uh, the disclosure statement or the section 32. Time to walk away. If you find covenants on your site um, uh, in your section 32 or disclosure statement, for example, a single dwelling covenant, very common on big blocks of lands. A lot of people think that, oh, I'll buy this big block of land and build 10 townhouses. Apparently, it turns out you can only build two and uh, then you are stuck with it because it doesn't stack up. So you make sure that you find out all these restrictive covenants um, that you have uh, on the property. The covenant could be anything. Um, for example, one of the properties that I own has a covenant of, um, of the dwelling type that can be built on it. For example, it can only be um, a brick veneer construction. Um, anything else, um, uh, weatherboard or, um, or plain rendering is not allowed in that area. So these are the things that you, you should know before you get into. I'm not saying that they would be wrong all the time, but you should know about them before you actually get into a project. So that's the due diligence overview. Um, I hope you understand uh, the various things that you got to look at and the various questions that you got to answer and must answer uh, before you actually get into a deal. Thanks for watching the video. All links are actually in the description if you would like to download a free resource which is the free property development blueprint. You can do so from my website by clicking on free blueprint and you should be able to download everything. So make sure you check out uh, propertydevelopmentsystem.com.au and also the links in the description below. I'll see you next time.